Daisy is a really tough game. Sometimes the start is the hardest. Well, I got nearly 6,000 hours. I'm going to teach you how to start real good. So how about you open the mirrors and sit back? Boom. We spawned in. Where are we? I don't know. Something you should always do, though, is find where the water is. Boom. I found the water. Now I should pick a direction. With the water on my right, like this, or the water on my left, like so. Once you pick that direction, you got to stay to it. Don't want to be backtracking and stuff like that. But let me show you a little something. Let's get up here. Okay, here I am seeing some buildings. The first building since I spawned right back there. I think important things to note, the tilde key can remove your HUD entirely if you hold it. Or if you just tap it, it can bring up a hotbar. Alright, so I made it to some houses. A philosophy is, if these are the first houses I've seen since I've spawned, they're probably the first houses other people see when they spawn as well. Whenever you come across a zombie, you can hold right click to bring up your fist and walk backwards to block. And when you do this, you are invulnerable to their hits. They cannot hurt you if they are hitting you in the front. You can left click to punch or you can hold shift and left click to do a power punch, which will stagger them. Sometimes you come across too many zombies, right? Like this, you're like, oh no, there's so many zombies. And yeah, sure, if I tried to fight them with my hands like this, I would guaranteed die. But the thing that zombies can't do is manage doors in this game, okay? So what you need to do is you need to run to a door, you need to close yourself in it. Make sure that your other door is closed because sometimes they'll lurk in the back door. And whenever you do this, you can sit in this door and lay down and it will speed up the time that it takes for them to de -aggro. So maybe you're overwhelmed by zombies, you never have to worry. You could always just lay down in the building and wait the time out. This is always, watch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna let you guys see. These zombies will calm down after a while. But if I'm standing in the widow, window and they see me, they have a line of sight, or if I'm crouched and they maybe see me through a window, if they have any line of sight, they will not de -aggro. okay? So when you get into a building, make sure you're out of all the windows and you're lame prone. Now, it's been about 30 seconds, 45 seconds. The zombies are calm, okay? If I go to one of these windows, or I open a door right now and I just run out, zombies are going to be everywhere. So something I like to do, okay? Ooh, someone's made some foot wrappings. We'll talk about that in a second here. I like to do is going to the opposite door. And making my way out that way. Because the zombies are going to be aggroed towards the door that you're on. Uh, I will show you guys a trick that you could do. Another thing that we could do to survive the zombies, because a lot of people have struggles with them, is use these doors as a sort of lock-in mechanism, okay? So I go in the door, I make sure this door is closed, make sure that door is closed, and then I do the same thing. I right-click, I block, okay? I could even stagger them and make an exit, okay? And look at I just trapped two zombies, maybe three. Let's see how many I can get. Took a couple hits for it, but I got three zombies in there, okay? Another aspect of zombies is they are a loot mechanism. So in the same way that I have an opportunity to find loot in this building here, I also have an opportunity to find loot on the zombie. So if you can manage to find the way how to survive with the zombies and not die to them via blocking, staggering them, maybe even throwing an extra jab or two, right? And it's, it's essentially like an opportunity for loot all the same as one of these houses is, okay? I killed two zombies here. I already found a bag from one, which I didn't have previously, but on these two, I found a liver pate. So that's a little bit of food, okay? Which if I hadn't fought that zombie, I would have never came across, okay? Another thing that we gotta be looking for right away is a melee weapon. The main reason we want a melee weapon is because my fists are good versus zombies, but a melee weapon is great versus zombies, okay? Every building that I run by, I just wanna take a quick look inside, see what I can find. I don't even wanna fight this one, so I'm just gonna let him come in, stagger him once, and then I'm going to go close this door on him. Now I control this zombie. This zombie is mine. It belongs to me. It can't do anything unless I say it. 
Generally speaking, when looking for a melee weapon, you don't need to check inside of the houses. You can check in cars, but generally speaking, you're going to want a bright purple shirt. No, you're going to want a melee weapon that comes from a shed. So any industrial thing, anything that you think is like like this, right? This is like an industrial place. Look, I found nails. So if I find a baseball bat, I can craft something. Look, I found some bullets here. Okay. So in here, I'm not going to find a melee weapon, but maybe I find it in the shed behind, right? Nothing. We're barren here. Okay. So now, here comes the second part of this, okay? I know the water is this way. Why? Because I played this map a little too much for comfort, okay? I'm going to prove it to you guys. I'm going to run over there really quick. Oh, look at I found a well on my journey to the water. And a soda. Nice. Things are looking up. I'm not even going to use this well because I want to prove to you guys how easy it is to survive. Okay? If you just understand. So there's the water. So what I want to do once I find this first town, okay, is I want to put my water, the water, to my back. And I want to run that direction. So I know that the water is directly behind me now. I want to go inland. Why? Because if I run on the coastline... I am running in places that have already been populated, okay? So if I'm running that coastline, I'm running places where people have already ran and probably looted. But if I run inland, the chance, like the probability of someone running in front of me drops so massively the second I get out of that, okay? It looks like I'm starving down here. Thankfully, we found a bunch of food back there. There are ways to make your food last longer. Okay, there's going to be a bunch of like tricks. You can you can wait until you're yellow and then eat that that according to Wobo, who is the great knowledgeable source of Daisy is one of the best ways to to preserve as much food as possible. You burn less of your food when it is in, in yellow compared to in white. You burn more. But something I always recommend, because if you are playing the game properly and you're not looting places where other people have been, right, you're going to be. You're going to be walking in food and eventually you're going to get a gun and you're going to hunt one animal and you're going to be balling out of control with food, right? Is I always recommend eat all of your food. Get rid of it. Eat it all. Everything should be eaten. Look at this. I got a shotgun now. So if I do find wildlife, all I need now is a knife. I got one bullet for the shotgun that we found earlier as well. And it came with a bullet inside of it, which you could see down here in the bottom left. Okay. So where it says one underneath this little yellow dot. That is telling me that, hey, you got one bullet already in there. If I wanted to check that bullet and see what's in the chamber, I could press R once. Ba -ba -bam, then it pops that bullet out. And it looks like, oh, I got a buckshot round. So I'm going to load that back in by dragging it to the left side where it says combine. Dropping it in there. Another way that I could get that bullet in there, I'm going to take it out again, is I could just hold the R. And that will put the bullet in the chamber. If I tap R, it clears the chamber. If I hold R... It puts the bullet in the chamber, okay? And that will do it at a random bullet in your inventory. So I have slugs, but it didn't put that in. I could drag the slug in there if I wanted it in there, okay? So now I know the water is behind me. I know what town I'm in, but I'm going to act like I don't know. I'm just going to run this direction, okay? Town's behind me. Boom, boom, boom.
Okay, so it looks like I ran a long way and I ran into a road. Now that I have distanced myself from the coast, it is okay to follow these roads. It's very good, actually. Normally, I would want to come out of one of those towns on a road that led more in inland. But it looks like this one isn't quite traveling um, north to, sorry, east to west at this point. So we're going to go ahead and go up this way. We're going to trace the road, but we're going to do it in the trees here. So I'm keeping my back, because I know the ocean's directly behind me. I'm keeping my back to that ocean. So I could further distance myself from the coast. Okay. But I am going to keep an eye on this road. Maybe it leads to a town with some food or something like that. The roads connect pretty much everything in this game. found another town it looks like all right so now i have found a town maybe not too far from the coast but at least detached enough that i can almost guarantee that i'm gonna find loot here okay why because other players are probably here at a less lesser ratio already found ammo here some rifled slugs found some new boots when it comes to clothing, you really only want to worry about the condition of the clothes and obviously how much camouflage, pending how you want to play the game. But ultimately, insulation on Shinaris rarely, rarely comes into play um, unless you're high up in the trees. So you don't really have to worry too much about the insulation value of things. More so, you're just trying to swag out. Here's some shots in the distance here. Whenever you're in a town and you're trying to find where you are, at the entrance and exit of all the towns, there will be these signs right here. O-P-R-O-B-E-U. But if you have the map open, you can actually search this place and uh, find it based on those little Russian things that you just saw. Alright, so I am still looking for a knife. It is probably the most important thing for you to get as far as loot goes when you start the game. Um, just because it allows you to access so many different crafting elements of the game. So we're going to go ahead and try and find that knife here. Water bottle. Perfect. Hopefully I come across another well and I could teach you guys a little something about that. Here, I'm going to go full swag with the blue for you guys because I really care about you, okay? Sometimes things get trapped in the walls like that. If that ever happens, you just got to walk up to it and you just got to hold F. I think I did the same thing. Just trapped them in the house. Don't even gotta worry. I'm trying to look good for the squad right now. I hope you guys appreciate this. Okay, let's uh, go on up this road and see if we can find a well. Teach you a little something about getting hydrated. So that zombie was a house worth of loot. I found a soda and a tomato. So just think about that. Whenever you are avoiding zombies, think about, well, it could be an opportunity for loot. A lot of people struggle with food, but they're also avoiding every zombie they find. Um, stealth kills are something that you can do in the game, but they are ultimately very difficult to accomplish just because zombies awareness is pretty high. And unless there's like some sort of element colliding with their ears, it's hard to get one over on them. We still haven't found a knife though, which is very unfortunate. Something we could do if we find a chicken or some rocks on the road, we could combine them and get a knife. There we go. We got a knife. So now that we have this, we can put it in our hands. Okay, I put it on my hotbar there. And I could drag items onto it, such as the potato. Certain things have crafting mechanisms connected to it. So it peels this potato for us. A lot of nutrients, more water than food, too. Pretty good for us. 
So as I loot through houses, you may find that I press tab a lot. I just check to see if anything's in the vicinity because sometimes you can't see the stuff, right? So I just press tab, check it out, check it out, check it out. And then maybe I'll do a scan as well because sometimes uh, the things don't show up on the vicinity like they're around the corner or something like that. We got Santa Beard here. Like, for example, right there. I just found these bullets on the ground, but I didn't see them. I saw Santa's beard. I pressed tab and I found the bullets, right? Alright, so now I got a knife. I have a gun to defend myself. So I have a melee weapon in the knife. I have a gun to defend myself. And I have a bandage as well. But I think I'm going to need more bandages. So something I want to find now is called an alcohol tincture. So I want to look in all of these cars and particularly medical zombies or anything medical to find an alcohol tincture. See, I tried to do a stealth kill there. I walked up to him, but they're very aware. So it looks like they got a couple zombies here. So long as I can keep them off of me all at once, we could fight a bunch of them. And I'm essentially checking houses right now for loot, right? Although it makes a noise when you block, it doesn't give you damage. So, so as long as you're blocking zombies, you could literally block them forever. I could never stop blocking. Um, so long as they don't get behind you or get to the sides of you, when you're blocking, you're pretty much invulnerable from the front. Okay, so something about wells. Whenever you do get to a water bottle, um, you get to a water bottle and you find a well. Let's say you found the water bottle in the house just like I did. You'd never want to drink what's in the water bottle right now. That water is dirty. It'll get you sick 100% of the time. So what we do is we scroll wheel down and we empty the water bottle. You should see him pouring it on the ground. If ever you start drinking it, you could right click. Here, I'll fill it up a little bit and right click and show you to cancel your animation, okay? So watch, I'm going to drink a little bit. Oh no, I didn't want to drink it. I could right click and it'll stop it, okay? Or else you will kill yourself, okay? <laughs> Just be clear about that. Daisy is very unforgiving. So let's fill this up. I'm going to show you guys whatever you get, whenever you get to a well, and you never know when you're going to find another well, right? Whenever you get to a well, you want to fill your stomach to the max. You can always eat food later, and the starving attribute, if you ever are starving and you get red apple down in the right corner, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, you really want to worry about your hydration. So whenever you get to a well, drink as much as you can. So we're going to drink to completion here. I'm going to... Oh, see, I got the stomach icon. So if you are super worried about survival and new players, I highly recommend that you do this. I would say after you find the well, loot around the area. Okay. And then once you're done looting, come back to the well and fill your stomach again. Look at my water icon went away. I'm going to drink as much as I can. Go back to the well and fill up again. And I want to point out, this is just the first town that I've been to since I've left that place. So I've left the coast. And I'm already equipped with a weapon to defend myself, ammo, a bunch of variants of ammo, and a food that I have sufficiently survived off of now it's time to loot the town let's see what we actually find in this entire place okay i'm gonna put all of my loot that i have in my backpack so we could get a visual of how much loot i'm gonna find in this place i found that here i found the water bottle here and i found the knife here okay liver pot tech boom i didn't even see that i just pressed tab and i found it you see you see sometimes you gotta double check over your tab here we go See what I can find just in this first, first bit of structures that we found, okay? And this is not even including the well that just sufficiently filled our stomach with water. When I leave this place, I'm going to have full white on the water bottle down there. I'm going to be fully hydrated. Boom, ammo. And this, so this is a good opportunity to learn about that, how ammo works. If you put the magazine in your hand, you left click, hold it. You'll empty the mag. See in the bottom left, it's empty. And if you right click, hold it. You'll reload the mag, okay? Now I'm filling bullets. So this is a 380. I'm going to keep it right there for me. Still haven't found a truly capable melee weapon, which is okay, but you guys are really going to want to focus on that early on. The difference in having an axe versus a meat cleaver 
is a. Um, oh, look at that! I see some ammo over there. You see it? Thankfully, that's to the gun we're having too. We're rocking. It's a little shotgun round for us, okay? Some Chuck Taylors for all my Avril Lavigne fans out there. Well, it looks like we got a lot of zombies here, so I'm gonna go ahead and crouch, and I'm gonna fight them one at a time. Something also you can do is you can play with corners. So zombies struggle with corners. See how it gave me an opportunity to react to? If I just go around a corner, they like swing really wide. Right? So you can play corners to sort of give yourself an extra layer of safety and an opportunity to react to them. Oh, look at this. Is that a BK? It's a double barrel shotgun. Okay, so I just found another shotgun, but I don't want this previous one. So before I drop this, I need to remember to take the round out with R. Drop it on the ground, and then I'm going to move this one in my hotbar. And now I'm going to hold R on this guy, and I'm going to reload two bullets into it. So I hold R twice. Got two bullets in there. Oh, no. It put a white round. I don't want those rounds. Just a word of thought as well. These white rounds are not good. Don't keep them. Obviously, you're going to get better at navigating the zombies as you play more, so don't get discouraged. Um, but in general... I think you should, in the beginning, you should fight almost every zombie you see one at a time. As long as you can isolate the fights. It's like The Walking Dead. I don't know. Oh, look at that. We found some bandages. Some rags. Sorry. You can always make those rags that I just found, too. Um, just by cutting up any piece of clothing you come across with a knife. I'll show you how to do that next piece of clothing we come across. Okay, so I found a piece of food, but it's rotten. Make sure to check the status on it. Also, you can just see it on the food. It looks nasty, right? Um, you can cut out the seeds, but we're not really going to worry about that too much right now because I don't think we're in a position to really plant crops. So we're just going to move on from that. Oh, look at this. A box of cereal. Wait, let me, let me, let me, let me. So we can get the visual going still before I gobble it down. All right, so we're exiting the town. I imagine there's even more than I found, honestly. But from the buildings I looted, a little screwdriver too. From the buildings I looted, I found everything up here. Okay? And it may not seem like much, but that's two food items that are going to push me to the next town. And always remember, which way, which way was the ocean? Which way was the coast? It was that way. I kept it in my mind. It was always that way. The opposite direction. So now, I'm still back to the water. And I'm running this direction, okay? Now let's go see the next town. Every town that you get deeper into the map, the probability of someone being there before you gets less and less, right? Because you're moving further and further away from the spawn areas, and you're moving deeper and deeper into the areas that may or may not be untouched. So your probability, regardless if maybe one time you do it and you don't find any loot, the grand philosophy, the greater amount of the time going deeper into the map is going to result in less people being there previously, okay? Looks like we got some industrial over here. And, oh, look at that green building right there. So, I know this green building over here is a military spawn, gun spawn. Look at one right here, too. It could have nothing in there, but it also could have a weapon, okay? So, we're going to go in here and check. Look at that, a Makarov. Boom. So, I found a Makarov, which is this gun right here. And I already have a Mac. Oh, excuse me. It's called an IJ in this game. Sorry, excuse me. So now we got two guns. Uh, these are really good for melee weapons. Here we go. Got shots in the distance there. Shot, 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 shot. And I'm just going to run over here and check this other one as well. Sprinting ultimately will burn more calories, but I am always of the philosophy, if you are moving and you are finding more loot because you are sprinting, those calories burned will equal out. Um, but a lot of people like jogging, which is perfectly fine as well. I'm going to show you how to cut this up. Oh, looks like I hear an animal. 
Perfect. So I'm going to craft rags. So I could go over to it with my knife in my hand. Hold left click. Now I'm making the same rags that I found earlier, right? Boom. Three rags, okay? All right, so I'm going to go kill this guy. I'm going to try and use every part of the beast that I kill uh, because I think it's important. But whenever you hear wildlife, okay, it's important that you don't just run full sprint standing up. Whenever you crouch, as you can see located in the bottom left, my audio is lessened, okay? My audio is lessened two lines first. If I was standing up, three lines. I'm going to sprint in four lines, okay? But whenever you shoot wildlife, you want to shoot them in the head. Ideally with one bullet. Why? Because it gives you the most resource of it. So I shot him. Let's get the, our best knife, this worn knife here. We're going to go ahead and cut him up. Before I cut him up, oh no, I almost cut him up without gloves on. You can put rags in your hands and you could scroll wheel. Craft any number of different things. If you ever ruin your shoes, you could craft improvised foot wraps. Um, but in this, could it, this case, we're going to build some gloves, some hand wrappings. And we do that so we don't get blood on our hands, okay? Boom, I got hand wrappings here. But let's say you cut them up and you didn't put the gloves on. Oh, no. What you are going to do is you are just going to find a water source, a stream, or even, in this case, my water bottle. And you're just going to hold it in your hands and you're going to wash hands. Left click. So my hands are bloody. If I ate with these bloody hands, I would be sickened. And I would ultimately possibly die from it. Okay, so you want to make sure that your hands are clean whenever you're eating food. But look at this. You think food's a problem for a little bit? I don't think so. Whenever you come across bones, always grab them because you can put them in your hand and craft a bone knife. Which could come in great handy if you don't come across an actual piece of wildlife or an opportunity to kill something or a knife or anything like that. You can always just find bones from a chicken and uh, do it like that. So let's put the gloves on. And now I got all this meat. Think food's going to be a problem for a little bit? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I promise, guys, there's no scripted content. I'm not big enough to script content yet. But soon. Charcoal tabs. Cool. So they're almost useless nowadays, but it's all good. All right. So I remember I was on that road. The ocean was that way. I'm putting my back to the ocean, and I'm heading inland. I'm going further and further away from those places. Let's go. So whenever you have a box of ammo and you unpack it, be sure to pick up the piece of paper that it drops on the ground. Why does it drop it on the ground? I don't know. They're promoting us throwing waste out the window of our cars. I don't know. We shouldn't. It shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. Devs, it shouldn't be that way. Okay. I've been playing Daisy for a long time, guys. I really appreciate you guys tuning in to even check this out. Um. I came to a point recently in my mind where I was like, hey, I have all this knowledge... And I know other people are sharing thoughts about how to survive, but I don't want to spoil anyone's gaming, the joy of the unknown. But then I figured the people that are going to look this up are going to be people that are interested in it. So I figured, why don't I do it? So I'm happy with my 6,000, 7,000 hours of playing that I could kind of export some of this knowledge onto your guys' brain. Oh, look at this building right here. So I was leading by here thinking this is all industrial, but look at, we got a little military building. So never overlook a compound. I think that's a working vehicle right there. Like a drivable vehicle. Maybe not working. We did find that truck battery earlier. So, look at that. Found a Glock mag because I was holding shift. Yo, I think this is a drivable truck. If I find a glow plug, or it has a glow plug, maybe I could drive this truck. Missing wheels. So, vehicles need... Trucks in particular need two things. A, a glow plug. Oh, it only needs an engine, actually. It doesn't even have a glow plug anymore. Look at that. I found gloves.
Right, so we're headed down the road, opposite the coast. Boom, we're going. Wherever will this road take me? I do not know. But I think the most important thing for people when they're starting... One is navigating the zombies. And I will say this. The more you fight them, the easier they will become. So instead of fearing the zombies, maybe challenge yourself with finding one zombie by itself and trying to pull it away and fight him. Once again, if you just hold right click and you back up, you're going to never take damage from them. If you hold control while you back up, you'll slow down how fast you back up. Check out. Right? And that helps a lot. That helps you kind of slow down. It also allows you to recover stamina faster. A lot of people don't know this, and I think it's kind of minute, but ultimately, all these things add up. So, oh my god, look how fast my stamina goes up, and then I hold control, it goes up even faster. Okay. So, holding control while you're right-clicking is super strong, and right-clicking and backing up, sorry. Um, if you want to do the strong attack that I've done, you hold shift and then left-click. That'll do the strong punch. If you want to run an attack, you run full sprint and left-click. But my stamina's out, so I can We are 30 minutes into our journey right now. Okay? And we are reaching our second inland town. Not our second coastal town, but our second inland town. I don't know what the town is. I'm just going to push in here. We're going to check it out. And we're going to see what we can find. Okay? I am abundantly confident that we are going to find more loot here than any town we've seen so far. Why? Because we are at our deepest point inland. There is a chance that someone just ran through here. But that chance is incredibly slim in comparison to where we were previously, okay? So here, I'm going to go at the entrance of the town. There's always going to be these. So if you're playing with I Survive or one of the Daisy maps, you could use that to reference where you are. But I'm just going to go in and I'm going to loot. I'm going to try and do the same thing. I'm going to even cook here. Let's, let's, let's manage the cooking first, okay? One thing that you need is you need, you need something to ignite the fire. So we're going to need matches, okay? You're going to need firewood or sticks, which I'm going to show you both right now. So here's firewood. Here's a stick. If I combine it with a knife and I scroll wheel, I could do split or sharpen. I want to split these sticks, okay? So I'm just going to take this firewood over to this house here. And I'm going to put it into the fireplace. Boom. I placed it in there. Okay. Now I want to drag this onto the paper slot. Now I have kindling and fuel. Now I just need something to ignite it. And I'm not in a huge rush. I, I feel pretty confident I'm going to find food in here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and look for that food first. So I'm going to reach down. I'm going to grab the shotgun. See if it has any bullets. It looks like it doesn't. So I'm just going to drop that on the ground. You could drop things on the ground with G if you just hold it. Not found any loot yet and no zombies. So someone may have actually just been here. They may have just fought the zombies or pulled them off a certain direction. Must be vigilant, my friends. Oh, there we go. Look at this alcohol tincture. Perfect. I can show you how that works. <laughs> Boom. So we just found an alcohol tincture. I could take this alcohol tincture and I could drag some of my rags and combine and it will disinfect them if I hold left click. 
And this will make these rags good for bandaging. And it will give me the status disinfected right there, right? So that allows me to use those rags like bandages, like medical bandages. So let's get a bleed really quick. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to. Okay. So the next one I find. Okay, all the zombies are coming out of the woodwork now. They're all just hiding in the corner. Oh, whoops. So I'm going to try and not even eat this boar. Because what if you guys didn't find a pig? And you're watching this and you're like, Oh, well, I never found a pig, so I didn't even have that opportunity. So I'm not even going to... We're going to skip this. Maybe you didn't find a gun and you didn't have access to finding the food. Okay? We found one can of peaches in this town. Can of peaches are the gold standard, guys. They're so good. So let's display. Got a rope right here, too. Oh, look at this bunch of zombies. I don't think I'll be able to fight all of them. I wonder if I can lock them in this building. I locked them in the building. Supermarket right here. So I want to point something out. I think a lot of people get frustrated because they go to the supermarket and they're like, I didn't find any food. Found a gun here. They go to the supermarket and they're like, I didn't find any food. Yeah, supermarket kind of sucks, guys. Ultimately. <laughs> I think it's good for flags, but that's about it. So don't go to the supermarket thinking you're going to find grub and you're going to be good. Like it's The Walking Dead or something. It's not that way. It's not that way. Got two more sides of the street over here. Oh, look at that. Another piece of food. So I found a piece of food in this building. This is a good rule of thumb. If you're in a structure, right, like I'm in this door, this part of the building, and you find a piece of food, don't keep looting the building. It's going to be like one piece of food per building. You're not going to find more. Right? You're going to find what you find in the place you find it. Don't, don't, like, once you find one, I highly recommend just moving on. A lot of people, like, are like, oh, I'm going to find more loot. No, dude, you're not going to find more loot. Loot the one building, find something. Okay, cool. I'm grateful for this. I'm going to move on. So, like I said, guys. I haven't... <laughs> oh, dude, that zombie did that to himself. I didn't even gotta do nothing. I haven't... I haven't uh, cooked no meat. I didn't use the gun I found to get an advantage from that. But look at my look at my food status right now. So a lot of people struggle, you know, to, just to find the food. The food is such a, such a hard challenge. And I think it's just people are looking in the wrong spots, you know. Oh, look at that. This one has a bullet in it. I'd rather have the pink one, though. Ah! 
<laughs> oh god. Um, I think down here. I already checked this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already checked this one. Hey, 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 yeah. I haven't checked this one, though. Let's put it on. Who cares? Forty-five minutes so far. I've gotten enough food to give me a full white apple. In this, I think in a moment here, I should I should be able to bounce back up. And my water is almost full. I'm gonna drink the. Once again, I found a well. What should I do? I'm gonna drink till my stomach is completely full, and then I'm gonna get out of here. I should have done it before I looted, honestly. But I think I'm in a pretty good place as far as the loot goes. I'm not even gonna loot these, but I know, because I kept it in my mind, where I came in the town, I came in the town up here. I came in the town up here on this road right here. So what am I doing? I'm going back to this road, and I'm putting my back to where I think the water was, right? And then I'm running that direction. Boom. The water was that way. This is the road that I was taking. We're going deeper into the map, right? Those houses, I bet you those houses are abundant with loot, because no one ever goes there. Nice beanie, dude. Boom. Going deeper. Following the road, don't know where it goes, but I know I'm heading inland. So now the road is kind of turned, right? I was going one direction, I was going that way, and then it turned and it pushed me this way. Generally speaking, that is okay, so long as it doesn't turn you back towards the ocean, right? So I know, based on me just like mapping it out as I'm walking, that that way is with the water to my back. I should be running that way if I wanted to go deeper. But this road turned. Ultimately, towns, being at towns, is more important than being inland, right? At this point, because I'm already off the coast. So generally speaking, you want to follow the roads. Why they're going to lead you to the next connecting point. It's going to lead you to the next set of buildings. It's going to give you the access to the next set of loot, right? While I got you here, I'll take this opportunity to teach you about melee, okay? So if you right click. I'm going to already do Earlier, I think this is where I heard shots. So the road is down there, and it turns left here. I know this because I'm a, 
one of no life loser and I saw the road up here. So I believe there were some shots here earlier. What should I do? Run in there brazenly? No, I should play very quiet. Should make sure not to make too much noise and stay off the main roads. I think those core things are really going to help you when it comes to you progressing and not getting into trouble when you don't need to. Okay. You notice how I'm running with the road, but I'm not running on the road. That is incredibly important. So many players run up and down these roads. And if a player just ran by, they would see me if I was on the road. But if I'm right here, what are they seeing? Nothing. I could see them run by too. You know what I mean? So don't run on the roads. Run with the roads. Looks like there's a police building up there. Maybe I can find some armor for myself. So I am a little scared because someone shot earlier. So instead of looting every building, because I do have full food, I'm going to loot every now and then, just when I feel like it. Oh, looks like I finally found the melee weapon. This is something cool. If you ever have a box of nails, which I found earlier, you could open it up. And you could combine the nails with the baseball bat. It's going to make a spiked nail. Liam Neeson. What's the guy from Walking Dead? It's going to make a, a spicy baseball bat. Bam, ba, da, bam. Zombies now should be very little issue. Let's get up here. Let's let's figure out uh, who was shooting earlier. Get eyes on this police station because we can anticipate that someone's going to be guarding that. Looks like I aggroed one zombie, so what I don't want to do is run out in the open. What I want to do is find somewhere tight to a building. That's where I, I lower the amount of different angles I could be shot from. And, sink them, and I want to find it. Look at that. Two hits, and this bat is putting in work already for me. Alright. So this is an important moment. Whenever you find a police station, there's a good opportunity that the zombies around it and the Police zombies will spawn a vest, but it looks like neither of these two did. Let's see if we can find a different one that maybe did inside. Doesn't fit. Tough. Really want that gun. Oh, it's got a mag in this one too. Come back for it. I'll find some ammo. So I'm mainly looking for a vest here. Another mag for that gun. A mag with one bullet. Ooh, it's very tempting. 13 rounds in that mag. And another shotgun.
All right, let's get it. So I'm now doing something called triple king. I have a gun, a bat, and another gun. The problem with this is I can't press the key on my hotkey to put my gun back on my back. So I'm going to have to drop something or switch to one of these in order to get it to come back around. Right. So I switched to the SSG and now it took that gun out. Okay. But I wouldn't be able to switch to say my bandage right now if I was bleeding. I would just have to manage it. So I went back outside or inside and then I came back out and it's raining. Zombies are going to be less responsive now. So it's going to be easier for me to just run around, do whatever the hell I want. Because zombies are going to be a little slow on the draw. Okay. Let me quickly navigate what we're going to do here. So I don't need this. I don't need a hundred of these mags. I will take the bullets out of this guy. But I think I'm just going to go without the bat. Here we go. So once again, I'm emptying the magazine so I can put the bullet in the other magazine. We're coming up on an hour here. We're making our way to it. So these are like a seasonal thing. There's supposed to be, there could be care packages underneath there, but I'm not going to mess with any of those. But yeah, that's it. That's an hour, guys. So we made it to an hour. This is the loot that we found. Uh, going along that. We got all this stuff here. I hope you guys learned something from it. I hope you guys uh, feel a little more confident facing the odds. And uh, remember, uh, you're going to die. It's part of the experience. So don't get discouraged when it doesn't go your way. Um, you just got to stay persistent. And you got to focus on doing your best and getting better every time. I think that's more important, right? Because even the best players with a million hours are going to miss shots. And you got to be just to yourself. Give yourself an opportunity to get better. Give yourself an opportunity to be exposed to the elements. And don't get discouraged when it doesn't go your way. Just slow back in, respawn, and make it happen. I care about you guys. I hope you guys learned something from this. I wish you all the best. I'm going to do a bunch more tutorial videos in the future. Um, until then, have a great, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.